Get your foot gone! Get your foot gone! Oh boy everyone, Mark Chess here. Welcome to the channel. And today, I'll be giving you my performance review of the Greek Freak 3. So let's go. Giannis is currently now in the finals. And as I am filming this, they are now up 3-2 against the Phoenix Suns. So for the NBA Finals, I am kind of don't have a direct favorite. I like the storyline of CP3 to have his first championship. Of course, I'm also rooting for Devin Booker. But at the same time, I also like the story of Giannis. Of course, he came from a very humble background and now he's competing to have the NBA championship. So that hard work of Giannis is something. And of course, Chris Middleton, which is really, really performing very good and very well in the finals and helping Giannis carry the Milwaukee Bucks. So that's a little bit of a side note, but let's talk about this sneaker, the Freak 3, like Giannis Antetokounmpo's game. It is very freaky. If you have been following me on Instagram, I've been posting a lot about the sneaker because I've been using this and the issue 3 a lot right now for reviews. The Freak 3 is currently in my favorite list. I like how it performs, but let's touch up first with the materials of the Freak 3 if you haven't watched my unboxing video. So as for the materials being used on the Freak 3, it features a very similar material used on the KD14s. It's kind of a fused mesh, but what's nice about this, it's, it's a little bit thin. It's kind of a net-like mesh, but it's not as rough. And it's really thin and doesn't stretch that much. So ventilation for this, because it's thin, is good. And as for durability of the material, it seems pretty good. I actually have some uh, foot scratch from my opponent here, but kind of affected the synthetic leather, but as for the fuse mesh, it didn't leave any marks, just dirt there on the material. So I would say durability of the material is pretty good on the Freak 3s. And what I like about the material is it gives a little bit more texture to the sneaker. And as for durability, where you need the fusing around the tip of the toe, they have it there. And as for the side, the cushion goes up for extra durability to the sneaker. Now let's move on to the mid part of the upper of the Freak 3. It features this strap, which mainly doesn't do anything, it's just for aesthetics. And in all honesty, I think it made the Freak 3 look better instead of having no strap on the sneaker. Imagine if there's no strap, it looks pretty standard, but with the strap, it looks extra. Yeah. So as for the lacing system, it features a traditional lacing system, which is pretty good. So you can adjust it in the forefoot to the midfoot and even on the last lace loop. And given the shape of the Freak 3, the fit is kind of different from the Freak 2 and the Freak 1s. The 1s and the 2s, especially the 2s, is really snug around the mid part and even on the forefoot part of the sneaker. Well, as for the Freak 3, it has more toe space. As you can see here, there's more toe space to the sneaker. So it's more wide foot friendly. If you're a wide footer, you will like the Freak 3 more compared to the 1s and the 2s. And moving on to the back part of the sneaker, it is very nicely padded around the ankle and Achilles pillows are very visible. And as for heel containment, lockdown. It has a very good lockdown. I didn't experience any heel slippage. And especially if you really tighten the laces to get that very nice fit to the sneaker. The tongue is also very well padded. It has a very nice pull tab to make it easier for your foot to go in. It has an internal heel counter and also the cushion goes up really high around the back part and lateral and medial part of the heel or back part of the sneaker. It goes up there in the lateral part and this is the medial part. It really goes up and this part of the cushion, I think it also helps like on the KT, it has a 3D support system. So on the Freak 3, it's not as hard as the ones on the KTs, but this will help you a bit in my opinion so you won't roll your ankle or it will give you that security feel when you're doing sidesteps, especially Giannis, who's a big dude 
who likes doing Eurostep and those powerful Eurostep. So I think this gives you a peace of mind that kind of something is hugging your ankle. So that's just my opinion. Let me know your thoughts about that. And as for the upper, like I said, for the look, for me, this is the best looking freak basketball sneaker from all the three sneakers. And this one, especially this colorway, I really like how the pink salmon melon tint look to the sneaker. And the outsole is kind of yellow. It has a very nice color to it. And the strap is teal blue. It gives a KD7 vibes to it, which is one of the best looking KD sneakers from the KD line. Now let's move on to the cushion part of the Freak 3s. The Freak 3 has this phylon material, which is relatively thick and it is thicker, the thickest from the Freak 1 and the Freak 2. And that's one thing that they really modified on the Freak 3. And the one main difference that I saw from the Freak 1, 2, and 3 is that they upgraded, for my opinion, it's an upgrade because I like my cushion. And with this cushion setup, it has two zoom pods that are very thick that is kind of similar to the Zoom BB NXT, which a lot of you have pointed out because I forgot to mention that in the unboxing. And those similar zoom pods can also be found in the LeBron 17s, which is very bouncy but you just need to break it in by just a little bit, maybe around 30 minutes of non-stop running and jumping on the court, then you will feel the bounciness. Then after unlocking those zoom pods, because there's a space here in between, there's a hole, so it's not that locked, so it's unlocked or uncaged. So the zoom pods has more space to expand, which is good, and you can really feel the bounciness in the forefoot. Impact protection in the heel is really nice. And the phylon material that they use on the Freak 3s is more on the plush side. So you will really feel the impact protection on the Freak 3s. Now let's move on to the traction of the Freak 3s. Like on the Freak 2s, which I really like the traction in the Freak 2s. On the Freak 3s, they still maintain that amazing traction. But they change it up in terms of the rubber material. I think the traction on the trees is an upgrade from the two, mainly because this grips awesome in any types of floor. I played with this in a clean court, dusty court, outdoor court. You can see how dirty the sole of my Freak trees are, but even with that dirt present there, it is still gripping really hard on the floor. And mainly because I think it has the same similar blade style from the PG5 Kobe 9s and the KD14s, which is very pliable and they are very thin. It moves a lot, so it doesn't matter if the floor is dusty, it will still stick on the floor and grips hard, which is what I like. I want my traction to be dependable in any types of floor. So the traction in the Freak 3 is really dependable. In terms of outdoor use, like I said, it's pretty durable, although this is not an EP version. I don't know if there will be an EP version, but usually what we have here in the Philippines are EP versions, but EP version, yes or no, XDR or non-XDR. I don't see any tearing of the rubber of the Freak 3s, so I think outdoor use will be okay on the Freak 3s. Another thing that I like on the Freak 3's traction is it's kind of decoupled, very similar to the Freak 2's. You can see it's cut here and the mid part. So it's not your normal decoupled outsole, but it has a very nice heel to toe transition and it bends well around the midfoot. Even though there's a TPU plate in the middle for stability, it's still very, very nice in terms of to toe transition when you're running up and down the floor. It has a very nice feel to it when you're running. Another highlight of the Freak 3s, it's not running out of highlights for the Freak 3s. That is why it's one of my favorite sneakers to hoop in right now. Look how wide the base of the Freak 3s are. It is really, really wide and you can see how wide the lateral outrigger from the cushion of the Freak 3s are. So it's very stable around the forefoot, although doesn't have that plate that is present on the Freak 2s, which I really love in terms of support and containment. 
but this still does the job because the cushion also goes up a little bit around the forefoot enough to cage your foot in to prevent your foot from slipping out the footbed. For my overall review and opinion on the Freak 3s, like I said in the beginning, it's one of my favorite sneakers to hoop in right now. The cushion is very bouncy in the forefoot, good impact protection, the heel, of course the traction is amazing on the Freak 3s, which is one of my favorite tractions out right now in the market and the very nice heel to toe transition. And in my opinion, it looks pretty darn good, especially this colorway. And for the price of the Freak 3s, it is 6,800 pesos. So a little bit more expensive compared to the Freak 2s, but in terms of the upgraded cushion and the traction is really, really good. I would say the additional 500 pesos or $10 increase on the Freak 3 is worth the money. And in terms of looks, this is the best looking Freaks. As for the sizing of the Freak 3s, regular footers go true to size and wide footers go half a size up. So this has been my performance review of the Freak 3s. Let me know what you think about the sneaker. Hit me a comment down below. This has been Marches once again. Thank you for your support. I'll catch you in the next one. Peace.